Welcome everyone, it's Egwin here from Beyond Systems. Today we are talking about our feet, how to mobilize them and how we can get a little bit better in touch with them to improve balance while walking, to just improve our perception of this region and reintegrate them in our available network of body parts that we have conscious control and perception over. Now, let's just jump right into it. When we take a look at a foot, now, first of all, obviously, we have the insertion point, sort of, of our lower leg into the foot, which is rather further back. There is only one bone between our talus and the heel, and that's our calcaneus. The story looks completely different when we take a look further out to the front, especially in front here, there are a lot of different bones. So we have our tibia and fibula, which come down from here. We have our talus, we have our calcaneus, and then we have our cuboids, our os naviculare, and we have all those metatarsal bones, and then eventually our toes out in front. On the sole of the foot here, we have the plantar fascia, which is basically a connective tissue layer that really helps to stabilize this whole region a lot. And on top of that, obviously, we have a lot of muscles that form together with the bones, the longitudinal arch, the transversal arch, and also a something like a lateral arch here as well. So when we put our foot down onto the ground and we actually have a nicely built arch here, then this is what we call a healthy foot. If the arch was way too high, then there is too much tension here or a distortion in the bones. And if the arch was completely collapsed and especially the talus region here starts to break sort of in towards the inside whenever I put pressure on, then also there is some sort of issue. But apart from that, those obvious issues regarding the arches of the feet, what's an issue more often than not is that most people don't have a proper relationship with their feet. Well, they are perceived as something you would say, all right, well, yeah, I have them, I move around on them, but that's pretty much it. So it's a relatively rare thing to actually touch the feet consciously rather than just washing them. Um, and we have a lot of muscles, like I said. We have so-called intrinsic muscles, which are the muscles that run from inside the foot to other parts inside the foot. And then we have our extrinsic muscles, which are muscles from the lower leg that insert in the foot or have some sort of function out towards the toes. Now, all of those things biomechanically work together to have a solid as well as very mobile and adaptive foundation for whatever we do when we move, when we run, when we walk, when we stand. All of those things, they require this tool down here, this element of our body to be in perfect health. Whatever structural imbalances we have down here, they translate in terms of distorted tension patterns or in terms of collapsed structure upwards into the body. And even if it's just half a degree or a degree off down here, that already makes a lot bigger issues in the knees, in the hips, and then eventually in the lumbar spine and even the shoulders or the neck. So right now let's jump into a first exercise to get in touch with your feet and to assess what their current status is. So to get started with this, bring your leg in a comfortable position. If you can have it here and 
grab it with both hands comfortably without any problems, that's perfect. Um, if this is uncomfortable for you, then either sit on a chair or put some sort of yoga block or something underneath the knee where you can support your leg, something like that, whatever makes it more accessible to you. Now, in, when I'm sitting in this position, there is no need for your knee to be completely on the ground here. However, you should be fairly comfortable in sitting upright while working on your foot. If you have to sort of uh, manage to somehow sit without falling over backwards, that's not a good position to get started. You want to be able to perceive very precisely what you're doing down here. So comfortable sitting position is of the utmost importance. You can either also sit on a block to bring yourself into a little bit of a better position or lean against something or like I said, sit on a chair, whatever it might be that's of help. Now, first of all, I want you to simply touch the foot. Use both hands, touch the foot, touch the ankles. We have an inside ankle and an outside ankle and simply get in touch with this structure down here, right? So we have an inside ankle here. We have the outside ankle here now, or the malleolus medialis and laterals. Now what you'll see here is actually that they are not at the same height. They are also not at the same position in terms of front back. So I just want you to touch your foot and get a physical sensational understanding of, okay, I have my toes out front. Then I have those mid and root elements of my foot, which is basically whatever fans out from back here, from my insertion point of the lower leg into the talus out towards the front. And also get a feel for how does the foot, the sole of the foot feel? Is it very tense? Is it maybe even tender in some areas when you put your finger in and press in a little bit? Is the foot very stiff? You can actually grab it like this as if you were having a roll and grab the fingers back here and in front here and you can try and open and close the foot a little bit and see is this possible? Is it possible to mobilize each and every one of those metatarsal bones against each other, opening the toes, is the foot flexible and mobile when you massage it passively. Then move back to your heel. Massage on the inside with your thumb from the ankle downwards towards the heel. Grab the whole calcaneus, which is this part down here, around here, this one. And actually try to move it around a little bit. So one hand holds the foot up here, the other hand grabs the foot down there at the calcaneus and tries to roll around a little bit. Basically, you want to get in touch and you want to do an assessment of how flexible your foot is. You can also take the knee to the inside, one arm on the outside, the other one on the inside, and then start to slowly massage your foot from one side to the other, one arm pulling up, the other pulling down, and vice versa. Also don't forget the toes in this calculation. So actually, round the toes passively using your hands and then stretch the toes all the way back up and round them and stretch them and round them and stretch them. Now let's move one step higher up. Grab your lower leg with one hand or from the inside or from the outside, whatever is more comfortable and then try to pull the foot in like this, release, let go. Pull it in again, release, 
pull it in, the four foot in, that's an invasion. And then we have an evasion, which is basically the foot going down and out. That's the opposite direction. And always see if you can actually let it sink back down to its neutral position. Just like this. Hold the leg and shake it out a little bit. Shake your ankles and your foot out just a tiny little bit. You can also flex and extend it. Flex and extend and shake it out a little bit. So much for just getting in touch with your foot. Use your thumbs on the inside here to get an idea of how tight your plantar fascia is. The plantar fascia comes from all the way from the front here, runs over the calcaneus and then eventually translates further back here into the Achilles tendon and up. And also get a feeling for the arches of the feet. The lateral arch here, the medial big arch here and the transverse arch out in front here. Dig your fingers in a little bit to wake that structure up. All right, good. Now you would do the same on the other foot. I'm just gonna stick with one foot for now for the video instruction. Next thing we're gonna move to using balls one or the other. Now, I have different balls here. This one is called a yoga ball. This one is just simple tennis ball like you get it in every single sports shop. Um, personally, to start working with the feet, I actually prefer a soft tennis ball, meaning even a tennis ball that has been played for a couple of weeks, months already. So a tennis ball that they don't need anymore at a tennis court because it doesn't have that full bounce anymore. The reason for that being, especially when you're very tight down here in your foot, you don't necessarily want to use the hardest ball available to start with. You wanna ease into the structures. So use a ball like a tennis ball, something not too hard here, and simply start playing with it. I'm gonna get up here so you see better. See, I'm gonna place my foot onto the ball. The heel is on the ground, the forefoot touches the ball. And I'm just gonna press in a tiny little bit. This is not so much about massaging at this point. At this point, I'm simply exploring how does it feel in different areas of my foot when I simply press down into a relatively soft ball? Do I feel my foot adjusting and adapting to that pressure? And see, I start all the way in front here at the big ball of the foot walk my way over towards the pinky toe side and then I shift my foot just a centimeter, half an inch further forward and I do the same thing again. So I really get a map of the sole of my foot. I switched a little bit further forward again and really test all of those different areas in my foot against that relatively soft ball. And then down into the heel. Good. Now you can shake it out a little bit. Obviously now would be the point to switch sides again. And then Bring the toes down and play with the toes around the ball. Try to grab the ball with the toes. Really make this whoop, 
Try to close the toes completely around the ball. Grab it and lift it if possible. And then stretch your toes out a little bit using the ball as you go along. All right. Again, shake it out a little bit, then do it on the other side. After that, then you switch to rubbing the ball on the inside edge of the foot here. So you angle the foot a little bit, then you switch to the middle and then you switch to the outside edge. So you're rather massaging the outside edge of your foot down there. And then before you switch to the other side with this last exercise, just take a couple of steps and see if one side does feel slightly different than the other. Another exercise that you can do in between here is something I'll show a little later. Now let's just stick with the balls. We're gonna move on to the harder balls here um, for a very specific reason because I want to work a little bit more not just with the soft tissue down here but I also want to work a little bit on the bony structures that are deep inside here see one of the things that's interesting is when we are in a deep squat position like this now a deep squat position has a lot to do with ankle mobility. See, I can sit all the way back in my heel. Now, I, I need more hip mobility and the ankle mobility I don't need so much. Or I can open my hip joints a lot more, see? My legs are further forward in regard to my upper body. Now I need more ankle mobility. So, ideally, both my hip mobility and my ankle mobility have a lot to do with each other. However, the mobility of the ankle also largely depends on the mobility of the bones here in my forefoot. How well those bones articulate with each other, both in terms of alignment and in terms of actual mobility. And more often than not, those bones, they are pretty blocked. So if someone says, well, yeah, I can't really do a squat because I have mobility issues in my ankle, it's not necessarily because their muscles are too tight up here. That can be a cause. But more often than not, it's actually mobility issues in the forefoot. So now we're going to use the slightly harder ball to do an exercise that actually helps mobilizing this central part of the foot for more mobility in ankle range of motion, which will also translate immediately to more adaptability again and more sensation in the foot again. Now, before we jump into working our bony structure here, obviously everything that we have done with the soft ball, you can also do with the hard ball to give your foot a little bit more workout here. But now let's jump into this quote unquote bony exercise. Now we have the big ball of the foot here, the pinky ball of the foot here, and the deepest groove that I can find in my foot when giving yourself palpation down here when touching your foot exactly here just a tiny little bit closer towards the heel maybe an inch closer to the heel away from the big ball of the foot in the middle that's where we want to place the ball for the next exercise so you're going to place the ball down on the ground like this the heel touches the ground and you bring the steepest part of your foot onto the ball now it's very important that you do not stand sideways. You want to stand in a way so that the direction of your toes and the direction of your knee is identical. So my toes 
are looking forward this way right now and my knee also bends forward this way. I'm only going to open this left leg out a little bit for you to see what I'm doing here. But when you do this exercise, just stand with both feet pretty much pointing in the same direction. From here, I have the ball in this deep groove. Make sure that it's not in front here, exactly on the big ball of the foot. No, I want it behind the big ball. And from here, I'm going to start to put pressure on it simply by bending my knee forward. See, I'm challenging my ankle mobility here by moving the knee over my toes. Make sure that it's not 100% of your weight in this leg. There is your heel on the ground, you have your second leg to support your weight, but you move the right knee over the right toes. Also make sure that the right knee, see if those are my toes, make sure that the right knee doesn't come into the side like this, but I want toes pointing forward towards the camera right now and my knee also going exactly forward towards the camera. Now you can switch the position of the ball down on the foot slightly more to the outside, to the pinky toe side, and do this again. And what this does is that you not, do not just mobilize the ankle here, but also here, the root of the foot. So all your cuboids, your naviculare, and all the metatarsals in front, this is actually what you're working on with this exercise right now. The second part of this exercise, you switch things up. So for the second part of the exercise, you bring the ball of the foot down to the ground, shift the ball all the way back, just into this deepest groove in front of your heel. And now you do the same thing again from here. Find this sweet spot, rock around a little bit until you find this sweet spot. And now from here, bend forward, and now also extend the ankle completely. Bend the knee forward, and then roll back. Bend the knee forward, and then extend back. After a couple of times, come down one more time towards the front, shake it out a little bit. Good, now you would switch to the other side, and then you can check your ankle mobility, maybe in a squat, or just by simply walking around a little bit. Now what we've done so far is using passive methods to get in touch with our foot and to increase mobility in the foot. Next thing we're gonna do is do something active with our foot. So we're gonna use our intrinsic and extrinsic muscles to actually move it and actually create this conscious connection with the foot beyond the tactile all the way into the neurological and recreate, retrain this plasticity so that all of those muscles actually know what they can do. First of all, what we're gonna do is simply from here, we're gonna lift all the toes up and put them back down. And lift all the toes up and put them back down. Now curl them up into a ball and extend them again. Curl them up and extend. Now lift them off the ground, drop them back down, curl them up in a ball, relax. Lift them up, come down, bend, relax. All right, now let's see if we can leave the big toe on the ground and only the other four toes lift off the ground. Nice. Now try to place one toe after the other or at the very least all four toes back down to the ground and now see if you can reverse the process and just lift the big toe. Put it back down, lift the other four toes and try to place them down ideally one after the other again which is fairly difficult and then press those four toes back into the ground 
and see if you can lift just the big toe back up again. Obviously, again, always on both sides, never just on one foot. You always want to work both feet, but for the sake of keeping the video short, I'm only showing it on one foot. All right, next exercise, you simply gonna hold your lower leg with both hands. Again, you can do this while sitting, bracing your knee like this, and having one hand down here and the other one on the side. And what we're gonna do now is simply, we're gonna point the toes and flex the foot. So dorsiflex the foot all the way up, release, point the toes, release, and dorsiflex, release, point, release, and dorsiflex, and release. The release, as I always say, is important. So you only want the muscles to work to get you into one of those extreme positions that lie outside the natural position the foot will hang in. And then from this extreme position, like full doors deflection, you just release back to neutral. And then you extend and again release back to neutral. Last but not least, next thing for this, we're going to do an in evasion and evasion. So from here, invert, release, and evert, and release. So you want to pull the foot in, release, and push it out, release, pull the foot in, release, pull it out, release, pull it in, release, pull it out, release, and then shake it out a little bit. Awesome. Now, when we do all those things, be very conscious of what's happening in your foot, in your feet, actually. And especially those active exercises that I just showed you. Those are something that you can do on a regular basis in different body postures, ideally. So sometimes do those while being in bed and you play a little bit with evasion and invasion, like all of those things, you can also circle your foot a tiny little bit in both directions. Play with your toes. Yeah? The next day, instead of doing it in bed, do it while you are sitting at a desk. Do it while cooking, do it while whatever it is you're doing. So it doesn't always have to be the same thing. It's actually very good if you mix it up. Now after that, now we would come into the realm of actually putting more weight on the foot and doing similar things like heel raises with only the balls of the feet, say on a stair or something like that. But we'll discuss that in a separate video. All right, so much for that. If you have any questions, let me know. How does this all work or benefit us? Simply by exploring a structure, giving it more sensomotoric feedback than it usually gets and also more attention and awareness consciously, you highlight it in your nervous system. You make it more prominent and your consciousness gets in better touch with it. Thus, over some time, you actually retrain yourself to be consciously aware of this body part, which in turn, especially when we're talking about the feet, will give you more grounding, more presence awareness, and it will just simply connect you to this physical aspect of yours more because it's literally the other polarity of constantly being in the head. And it is constantly triggered, although we are mostly not aware of it because every single time we take a step, you get a sensation down there. Most people don't pay attention to this. If you become consciously aware of that, boom, then suddenly all of the muscles down here, the whole coordination of the muscles improves. Tension levels in the body potentially drop 
because you are more aware, thus the body has no need for constantly trying to protect the structure through tension anymore. Because now the more you regain fine motor control, the more you can actively adapt. And that's exactly what all of this is all about. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you know someone who needs this information, please share it. Also like it. And if you want to stay up to date for more like this, everything that has to do with body structure, with consciousness, with mind, with emotions, how all those are linked with each other, energetics, physical body, biomechanics, then let me know and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, see you around. Have a beautiful time and explore and just be playful in trying all of those movements out. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.